Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I see a lot of familiar faces. So for some of you, uh, some of the things that we will mention this morning, uh, you've already heard and I see some participants that have already applied for the Dream Fund. So thank you again for uh, for joining us. Um, this session is very special because it's in partnership with uh, the Community Action Plan of Riverside County. Um, and they reach out to us uh, when they um, when we were talking about the Dream Fund. Uh, and I think it was uh, very useful to learn more about what CAP Riverside is doing and how many resources they uh, they can offer to uh, especially nonprofits, but also other organizations and individuals that are based in um, in Riverside County. So this is um, our first um, leg of the partnership, and we are looking forward to um, develop other useful and beneficial um, uh, initiatives for Riverside County, but but not only. Uh, my name is Mihai Patra and I'm the executive director of Caravans Rai Project. Some of you might know about us, might have attended some of our workshops or other programs, uh, but just a very brief introduction uh, about Caravans Rai Project. We are a social impact venture with a 501c3 status based in Palm Springs. Uh, we work, most of our work is focusing on the Inland Empire mission-driven organizations, uh, whether they are for-profit or non-profit uh, ventures. And our goal is to support uh, from startups to more advanced uh, ventures, develop their infrastructure uh, through a set of uh, programs uh, that are focusing mainly on the business of running a mission-driven organization. Uh, many of you here are representing nonprofits. Um, we work a lot on uh, aspects that include from uh, board development to uh, um, financial planning, business planning, and uh, and so on. Uh, so we we think that we were excited about the conversations we have been having with CAP and the team that is here uh, about different ways of uh, and new ways of looking at mission driven organizations and how we can uh, work together to support uh, to support them. So I would like to invite um, Carla Lopez. Del Rio, who is the executive director of CAP, to talk a bit about the organization and some of the really cool programs and resources that they offer to communities, but also introduce her team. Carla, you have the floor. Good morning. Thank you, Mikhail. We are excited to be here with you. Uh, we are excited about this partnership. Uh, Community Action Partnership has been around since 1979 and has helped uh, incubate and grow uh, nonprofits in the region for decades. Uh, you may know about some of them, the Coachella Valley Housing Corporation and the Early Childhood, the, I'm sorry, the Consortium for Early Learning uh, are just a few examples of what's possible when a resident decides that it's time to take action and to do something about something they're passionate about to meet a need of the community. Um, community Action Partnership also knows that uh, needs change in our community. We have every year something called the Strengths and Needs Assessment. And what we do is we try to identify how are we evolving and what are the new challenges that our low-income communities are facing. Uh, and one example would be the digital divide, right? Uh, those, those problems were probably not something that uh, nonprofits addressed in the past. Um, but we are addressing it now, and it's, uh, and it's how we are conducting business, it's how we are educating ourselves. So it's important that we support the residents that are trying to make a difference in their community. Um, we wanted to, you know, bring the attention that Mihai and uh, many nonprofits that you know started the same way, with a dream. And we don't know if Caravins or I was conceptualized just in Mihai's head, or he found a partner um, and he had the support. Uh, his journey is also a journey from which you can learn and how he's uh, uh, supporting you. And uh, special to our um, to our mission is that Mihai is based out of Riverside County, and he is a resident that's taking action, and we want to support his efforts as well. So we thought that bringing together some of our our programs and passion uh, would 
hopefully give you a little bit more of, uh, of support, but to let you know that we're here for you, that we have other programs that can support you in this journey, not just to start, but to keep going, because it will be hard, and we will be there by you. Um, the uh, other programs that we offer, uh, we, you know, we want to stay in touch with you, and we want you to stay in touch with CAP. Uh, we do have other programs that are matching funds for um, small businesses, uh, we have uh, programs in helping with electricity, with um, electrification of, uh, of homes, weather station of homes. So we have a whole slew of uh, services that we try to not just provide to the, to the, um, to the residents, but also hire the residents, uh, investing in subcontracting some of your businesses. Uh, for some of the services we provide. But um, the, today is all about you and learning how to get started. So we want to stay in touch. We don't want to overwhelm you with information. We just want you to please know that you can always reach out and that we're here to support. And, um, and we'd love to hear your ideas. Thank you so much for the time. And I leave you in the hands of uh, Vince and Monica from our team who will lead you through the rest of the, of the um, presentation. Thank you. Th th thank you, Carla. And as she said, we, we realize that there aren't a lot of resources for mission driven organizations for organizations that are um, looking to uplift communities and the, the only way to overcome some of these gaps are through partnerships and whether it's with agencies like CAP or small organizations like your events right project or even for profit entities. You know, I think in the future, these partnerships will be so common and so desired that there's no way it's very hard nowadays for a single organization to have a bigger impact unless they work together and across the board, regardless of differences and uh, other projects that they might have. There is always a way of of, uh, of working together. Uh, so as Carla mentioned, the conversation today is about you and some of the um, very interesting um, funding opportunities that are available to you, uh, especially startup um, entrepreneurs, startup ventures, uh, both nonprofits and for profit. So this is what we are going to discuss today. And uh, we will start with the Dream Fund, and then we will move to uh, the CAP uh, resources. And I will give the floor to my colleague Graciela to talk a bit to provide an overview of the Dream Fund program. Uh, but if you have any other questions for both programs, where for us, please drop them in the in the chat box. Graciela. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mihai, and thank you, Carla, and the whole CAP team for being here, and just everyone um, being here. Um, I see a comment that how long is the meeting? We were going to run through this as quick as possible, so don't feel like we're going to hold you here till 10. Um, so a little bit of an overview with the Dream Fund micro grant program. Um, I'll go through it very quickly, um, just because we do have another webinar that talks a little bit more in depth about it. Um, and we just want y'all to be um, a little bit more in, um, informed with the Lingo Filter um, grant. So as part of the Dream Fund grant program, um, that's brought to us by CalOSPA, which is a California Office of Small Business Advocates. Um, we'll be providing technical support to up to 60 startup mission-driven entrepreneurs, which that can be for-profit and non-profit. Mihai will get into a little bit more of what that means in the next slide. And it will be only available to folks in California. But we will be focusing on the Inland Empire. But if you aren't, if you don't reside in the Inland Empire or your focus isn't in the Inland Empire, that doesn't exempt you from the, the grant. Um, just know that there are others, there's 17 other centers, and I'll go ahead and link them um, right after I'm finished, um, that do provide this fund as well. So if you do feel like um, there's another center that can um, best fit your need and your organization, we, there's also other ones. Um, and so we will facilitate um, the access to this dream funds and each organization of these 60, um, it will be up to $10,000 that um, will be granted. And so through this, um, this, pro this program, it will be from February 28th to March 25th, um, which is next week. Um, the application process is pretty simple in, in terms of we aren't asking you too much. Um, it, 50 words um, plus, um, I'll link in the, the application on there. Um, but that's pretty much a, a, a rundown of what the Dream Fund micro grant program is, as long as you're a mission driven organization and you're serving the Inland Empire and in California, that's really what we're looking for. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Mihai to talk a little bit about 
the requirements. And again, there's another webinar that we do have, and I'll be linking in in the chat a lot of resources for y'all um, to stay in touch with this. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Graciela. Uh, I think we should just uh, move on to uh, Monica and Vince to talk about the Lingafelter uh, Development Award, and then we can continue about eligibility criteria and actually open the floor to questions. I think it would be easier. Vince, Monica? Good morning, everybody. I will kick it off talking about Lingafelter. Um, Lingafelter Development Fund is an initiative that we have here at Community Action Partnership. It started to honor a, one of our former employees that worked with us in the 90s. He was um, an organizer and he really was passionate about serving the low income community within the county. So after he passed away, his family left his trust and with community action to be able to continue his legacy of helping the community. And we were able to provide a lots of seed funding to numerous nonprofits in the area. I see a couple people on here that have already received the Lingafelter Lingo Development Fund from us. So I'm glad that you were able to join us today. Um, our goal is to create nonprofits that you know have the mission to, to serve those and that need that little extra boost um, to get that 501c3 status or to help with that seed funding to take their organization to that next level. And our, we have this program, it's been continuous, uh, but we thought this was a perfect opportunity to um, partner with Caravans RI with the Dream Fund to be able to help uh, um, in additional ways and grow the capacity of the organizations that are seeking to take their, to, to promote their organization and to really serve the community. If you are interested in um, applying to the Dream Fund, but you are not in Riverside County, then we can try to connect you to other resources, but Lingafelter is only for Riverside County at the moment. So, thank you. Thank you, Monica. Hi. There's, sorry. Please go ahead. Oh, are we gonna go to the next slides where we have yes. the different eligibility? Sorry. Thank, thank you. Uh, just a bit about the Dream Fund micro grant program and the eligibility criteria because they are uh, a bit more complex uh, and just kind of wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, and uh, as as uh, Graciela said, we uh, we already we provided the workshop uh, I think about two weeks ago only about the Dream Fund. So that's another resource for some of you there. Uh, re recently, we've learned that. Um, um, th there is a for those who are interested in the Dream Fund program. The main re one of the main requirements is that they have to be startup organizations, whether they are for profit or non profit. It doesn't matter. Uh, and <clears throat> the way the state of California de defines startups are organizations that have been legally incorporated or obtained business licenses after July first. 2019. So if you are incorporated, if you received your uh, any type of business license for your work in case you are a sole proprietor uh, before July 1st, 2019, unfortunately, you will not uh, you will not uh, qualify. Um, once this criteria is met, there, there are other few uh, elements that you need, other boxes that you, that you need to check. And at least one of the following, you need to have at least one or one employee or have a business banking relationship or uh, spend money on business expenses such as incorporation or accounting fees. One of these you don't have to uh, because, you know, as startups, we know how difficult it is to have an employee. So uh, whatever uh, one of these elements um, are um, easier for you that's uh, that's uh, uh, you are you are good to go uh, the way the dream fund was designed and thought by the office of small business advocate was really combining technical assistance with with uh, financial support and this financial support of up to ten thousand dollars is an unrestricted uh, fund you can use them for whatever aspects of your of your uh, of your work, and the 
17 organizations Graciela mentioned, including Caravans Rye Project, are working uh, with the Office of Small Business Advocate to provide the training part. And in our case, we developed uh, seven uh, mandatory workshops followed by one-on-one -on -one sessions that will get the participants, the applicants ready to uh, get uh, to submit their requests for uh, for funding. Uh, we have limited funds, our organization, so we are looking at um, selecting about um, between 50 and 60 uh, startups that will go through our program and later on will be recommended for uh, the actual uh, financial uh, financial support. Along with this requirements, we also um, expect the participants going through the training and later on applying for the funds to develop a budget, but also a comprehensive roadmap for their business, a uh, simplified uh, business plan. Uh, and in terms of the monitoring and evaluation of the uh, recipients following uh, moving forward, we it's very simple. We will be in touch with you and work with you in the future because we want to make sure that um, you get the support you need, but also we will have to report about your journey and about the challenges or the successes that you will uh, uh, experience um, to the grant maker and all the other partners that are included in this uh, in this program. So I think that's kind of the very brief overview. More than happy to uh, to answer uh, your questions. Each uh, just one thing. Final thing that I wanted to add here, each of the 17 participants in the Dream Fund uh, develop their own process in terms of uh, providing the funds, the technical assistance program uh, that was part of the application process that we as a uh, um, provider um, had to go through. So expect when you reach out to some of the other uh, 16 organizations to hear different versions of uh, what we've just said, especially when it comes to getting into this uh, into these programs. Uh, and let's move on to uh, Monica and Vince. Thank you. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, you um, to qualify for the Lingen Shelter Development Fund Award, you have to be a nonprofit based in Riverside County. And the majority of the population or the services you are seeking to provide with your nonprofit have to be geared towards serving low income residents. And it could be any part throughout Riverside County from Temecula, Corona to all the way to Blythe. We cover the entire area. And you must be a nonpartisan organization and not incorporated already as a state of California charitable organization. And we do ask that you have a volunteer board already, at minimum, a president, treasurer, and secretary, because part of our application process will ask you to submit the roster of this board. And we do ask that you have the ability to um, develop formal written procedures program plans and progress reports. They don't have to all be written ahead of time prior to application, but when we will check on the status to see how, how awesome your program is doing, how you're growing, we might you know, come and ask for these reports or to see, to see evidence on paper of the success of your organization. We do ask that you have documented community support already. That just shows that you've already been providing some type of service to the community. This can be in the form of Facebook posts, pictures, and even site visits. We can come and see you in action to really get a good sense of the work that you're doing out in the community. Thank you. Monica, can I add, add something? Um, it's important for us to get to know you. It's not so much, I, we, we hope that you don't see this just as turn, turning in paper to us, you know, and we, we try to make it not very difficult for you or complicated. We really just want to have um, a sense that you, you're doing well, but it's important for us to get to know you because then we can uh, help you with partnerships. We can help you with identifying what it is that you uh, may be able to offer or what you're looking for. And we may, maybe perhaps because we're so connected to so many people, be able to continue to support you in other ways than just money or or, or oversight. It's, it's more than that. It's a partnership with you too. 
just to add on um, Carla's point about getting to know you, just want to very briefly go through the application process that will be used both by CAP and us to get to know you better and also identify those organizations that are uh, that will be selected for one of the the funds you know the the regular uh, and <clears throat> we will i think Rasira has already shared the link to the application uh, just, yeah. sorry i need to open this uh yeah sorry just uh i'm gonna go back to i think the website and uh, explain some of the questions that um, um, are included in the application okay here we go so you know the regular email full name uh we because both programs um uh, uh, the Dream Fund focuses on the entire state, uh, the CAP uh, funding resource just on Riverside County. So uh, there are some questions about the zip code and the county you are located, the address. We are also looking, especially for the Dream Fund, because these are some of the requirements from um, um, the Office of Small Business Advocate. They are trying to target to make sure that these funds are also accessible to uh, low income areas, rural communities, uh, or disaster impacted areas. <clears throat> if you're not as part of these communities, uh, it doesn't mean you don't qualify. It's just, uh, it helps us better understand where you are located. And as Carla mentioned, in case there are other resources that are, uh, <clears throat> designed for this specific specifically for these communities we will be able to to share with you that information so it, it's it doesn't you it's not a, a let's say eliminatory uh, requirement obviously uh, a few questions about the language or race ethnicity age, age group most of these elements are for uh, for us again to better understand uh, who you are uh, we ask about what type of adventure uh, whether you are for profit, non profit, uh, if you, especially for the Dream Fund, uh, because they are looking for startups, you can incorporate after you get in, uh, accepted in the program. So uh, we are not asking you or requiring you to show us any um, document that will demonstrate you are already registered as a business uh, in, uh, in California. Uh, as we mentioned, sole proprietors are also encouraged to apply, but they will have to demonstrate uh, that they are in business by providing uh, copies of their different business licenses, depending on uh, your location. Some of some cities might not require that, but there are other ways of verifying other type of business licenses that you will be asked to uh, to uh, to share. Um, and a few questions about the the budget and uh when we say how much revenue has the venture generated to date we are thinking of whether it, this revenue comes from donations fee services grants just you know a general number we don't expect you to uh, um, uh provide you know the exact number but just to give us a sense of where you are on your uh, with your uh, with your startups um i think the most important questions that will give us a better sense of what your uh, aiming to do and what kind of impact and what uh, what uh, type of work you're providing is really share with us a brief description of your uh, of your customers who are the people that you are uh, expecting to serve also we want to learn more about the product or the services you are providing and please be specific uh, we we had some really amazing applications so far, but also some applications that were, let's say, less inspiring. And um, I, I think, you know, even if you are a startup and you cannot explain what kind of product or services you are providing, that's that's hard for us 
to um, to place you and kind of really understand what kind of services where you are trying to deliver. So being specific there, uh, we are only asking for 50 words. And again, we don't expect um, a novel or some uh, literary, it's not a literary contest, just very clear about the services that you have, you are providing. We've seen application applicants that just you know had bullet points which were very clear uh, exactly what you know demonstrating what uh, they want to to achieve. Uh, we are also asking about the social impact that your organization and you as an entrepreneur, as a startup entrepreneur, are uh, is tr are trying to um, uh, to generate. It it can be anything. So and again, we really want to get a better sense of what you're standing for. And <clears throat> probably one of the trickiest question is about your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's something uh, <clears throat> that we are very particular about because we want to make sure that uh, the, those that <clears throat> will benefit from these funds are really committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. There is no perfect answer here. We don't expect you to uh, um, talk about a specific community. It's really uh, case by case. So whether it's about uh, LGBT community or whether it's about the homeless community or uh, BIPOC, anything that you uh, think that it's relevant for your for your organization and i think you know in 2022 it's not that um, um, strange and uncommon to uh, ask people about their commitment uh, to diversity equity and inclusion and again i think this is a very open uh, uh, question a very open answer so uh, please don't hesitate to to be very specific and uh, uh, talk about the things that are related to you as an entrepreneur but also to to your uh, to your venture and I think that's about it the application thank you should we open the floor to um, the questions that'd be great Y'all can unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yes. yourself, and if you have questions in the in the chat, feel free to um, put them in. I did see one that maybe we can answer really quickly in terms of providing um, personalized feedback. Feedback, unfortunately, because um, to keep fairness and, and for everyone, we won't be able to give personalized feedback in terms of it, just because we are a bit of a smaller team, and we will be. Uh, we have a, a selection committee on that, so I'm so sorry about that. But we're happy to talk a little bit more ab um, about the, the eligibility if you reach out to us at contact at caravansaryproject.org, and we're happy to provide as much as we can. Um, but I'll go ahead and pass it over to Carolina and take the floor, Mihai. Or Vince and Monica and Carla. <laughs> yes, yes, perfect, yeah. <laughs> Carolina. Yes, hi. So I'm, I'm a little confused, sorry, I, and I entered this a little bit late from another meeting, but I had filled out an application, I think it was like a week and a half ago, I was also in a meeting, and is it the same application, the Dream Fund, because it didn't seem as in debt, and it was the $10,000 yes. eligibility, right? It's, 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 like, it's the ahead. same application. Okay, I don't remember it being that in depth, but I did receive another email saying that there was an additional I think it was the long, long something. I can't yes, think of it. Yes, th th this one uh, from uh, the Community Action of Partnership of Riverside County. And maybe if you have a question for Vince, Monica, or Carla, who are uh, from CAP. Okay, I cannot be a nonprofit, though, for that. You have to be a nonprofit startup. Oh, okay. So I am. So where is the link to that application? Not the dream fund because I've it's, already applied for that. It's the same. So the way it will work is okay. you apply just for the dream fund and we will share with CAP and the team here those applicants that are that identify their venture as a nonprofit and they will make the selection of the ORDs and the grantees for that program. Okay. And, and is there anybody that has reviewed the dream fund ones that are already there? Like you said earlier, like less than, you know, could could probably put a little bit more into it that we may hear back and say, you know, you may want to like reapply or anything like that. No. Okay. 
Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Daryl? Yes, hello. Um, my question is for Monica um, with CAP. Uh, on one of the slides, she said, or it says that you cannot already be a um, a public charity, a 501c3. And I, I wanted some clarity on that. Right. So you can already be a 501c3. The Lingefelter Fund will help either activate your 501c3 status and pay for the fees, or if you have already paid for it, then we'll use it for seed money. Uh, you can use it for other um, startup costs. You cannot be a state of California charitable organization registered as a charitable. So separate from a 501c3. Okay. Okay. I follow you. Thank you. You're welcome. Our... our our organization, our, our 501c3, um, is classified as a public charity. Is that what you're referring to? Um, we can go and we can look at your charter based on the, your paperwork from the state and compare it to what our bylaws are on a case by case to see if we can if you would still qualify. Okay. Yeah, Daryl, I, I think if I understand correctly, and that was a conversation we had yesterday with the Office of Small Business Advocate, is you will you have to register once you become a 501c3, you have to register with the state of California with this charitable board. I think that's what is that okay. Monica, the, uh, what you are referring to? Yes. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that clarity. Sure, I, yeah, I, I hope I got it right yesterday. So. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking too. I just wanted to make sure because on the 501c3, that's one of the, the options that, to be classified as a, um, a public charity, but that's separate from that, that additional um, registration. At least I, I that's think, why. Yes, I think that refers to whether you're a public or a private uh, uh, foundation. The one that you just mentioned, but the chari charitable board of state of California, I think it's called. That's a different type of process that you have to go through. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, Angel. Good morning, everybody. Mm. Um, my question, I think, would be: Well, I have two, but uh, the first one for CAP. So I. I you know, we went over the eligibilities, but I was wondering um, what other type of, well, like, would you all support us in becoming a 501c3 in a transition, the the um, the folks who get the, the grant? And, like, what does that look like exactly with the support that you all would bring in? If I remember correctly, you have a fiscal sponsor, right, Angel? Yes. Mm hmm so if you were granted the Lingefelter Fund, the money could be used to pay for the fees that you would need to register with the state of California to become a 501c3. And we could also direct you to different, um, if we can't do it internally, we can use our, our web of partners to help you get that applications filled out, connect you to technical assistance, you know, and also you would be getting the technical assistance from Care Venturi, um, to help you build up that, you know, roster, the forms, um, all the startup stuff that you would need to establish your nonprofit, whether it's connecting you to consultants um, through other agencies throughout Inland Empire, we will do our best to make sure you get your feet off the ground. Okay, and so does that mean then that we, there is a possibility that we'd be eligible for both? Yes? Yes, oh, okay. definitely. Okay. Everybody is, if you're a nonprofit in Riverside County, um, our goal is to try to get as many people as we could funded with through both funds, Dream Fund and Lingenfelter. If you get one, does not exclude you from the other. The idea was mm -hmm. to um, bring this resources them. together and increase the amount of funding that um, the beneficiaries will, uh, will have access to. Th there was a question about, I think from Gregory, about the um, workshops. So there are seven workshops between 60 minutes to 90 minutes each, uh, followed by one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, 
we we are trying to divide because we are expecting to work with about 50 to 60 participants to divide them in two groups one the first cohort will be sometimes late april early may and the second one i think early july we haven't set the dates yet because there are some com the the organization that you that will uh, provide the funds the actual funds is Lendistry. Uh, that's what that was the choice of the office of small business advocate and they are still working through the process that they are about to follow when it comes to providing the the funds so we want to wait for them a bit to make sure that that process is in place so when we start the training process and the one-on-one -on -one sessions we get you ready for for the next steps and we had as i mentioned we had a conversation last night with them so they are working on the timeline and other specific very specific requirements they are expecting uh for the participants and you know codes and uh background checks to make sure that uh funds are uh, organizations are uh, <clears throat> don't benefit from apply to different uh dream funds uh or get participants and get two grants so all these uh, processes once they are in place we will uh, uh identify we set the dates schedule the workshops but again it will be late April, early May, the first cohort and the second one in July to give everyone time to uh, the possibility to attend uh, one of them. Is there an estimated date of um, when you'll let the group know whether or not that they'll be moving on to the work? Uh, so the deadline for the applications is March 24th and we expect to need a week to uh, uh, go through everything and start uh, informing the about the results. Thank you. Sure. There was a question about the charitable. Um, I see it in the chat. It says, um, "Oh my goodness, I lost. I lost, I lost my my." Uh, my spot here, but I saw that somebody was asking why uh, the Linga Felter does not provide funds for charitable foundation, um, charitable organizations. Do you know, Monica? Um, if they're registered with the state of California as a charitable organization, those were, um, we were not granted uh, the opportunity to provide those fundings due to the funding, our funding source. Um, because it's to try to get startup organizations that maybe um, need that extra help to get started that were public nonprofits uh, serving low income. Okay. And I think. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, finish your thought. Oh, no, it's okay. And the other, the follow up question to that from the knee, Destiny Walker is can you apply for your program without being accepted into the Dream Fund? Um. I think that's a decision to make by cap. Sorry to throw it. <laughs> uh, what, what we will do and what we discuss with the cap team is that we will provide uh, the list of all the entities that applied, all the applications that identify themselves as a nonprofit in Riverside County. So I think that's a decision, Carla. Sorry for no, no, that's okay. your, it's, uh, We we want to make sure that everyone um, has the opportunity to benefit from uh, from both. So for us, it's really a decision that uh, will uh, belong to CAP. <laughs> well, the, I, what I would like to share is that you you should apply to the Linga Filter even if you don't get the Dream Fund because um, there will be other opportunities coming up. And if we get you uh, at least started. And in the right path, if you for some reason cannot attend all the classes or you know you don't qualify for the dream fund, uh, it doesn't mean that that's the end for you. Like like we said, we want to make sure that you are exposed to other opportunities that may come up. Um, like we mentioned, we have uh, other opportunities for small businesses. You may qualify for a small business uh, matching grant um, and, and other uh, programs we have. So just stay in the loop. Apply for the dream fund. If you don't, I just through through here. If you don't. Um, apply for the Dream Fund, do uh, reach out to Monica. Uh, let's talk about how to get you started. And then we can always circle back to Caravan Sarai when it's the right time to partner. And just one addition to that, there will be other funding opportunities that will be less restrictive. 
especially for and what, what whether you are accepted in to benefit from the dream fund or the cap resources uh just knowing who you are and what you do will help us reach out to you directly when other funding opportunities will come in the very near future especially for uh limited english speaking uh, entrepreneurs or individuals that want to start businesses there, there are um, a lot of funding opportunities that especially in the state of california are in the pipeline and are discussed and ready to go so uh don't be discouraged there are a lot of resources out there it's just a matter of making sure you know about them and i think that's one of the things we are trying to do with gap here <laughs> So you all know this is a very uh, a new partnership for us too with uh, Caravan Sarai. So we're, we're we're working through it to make it stronger and uh, and and more powerful for you. That's why it's important that you're here today because you're starting with us too. And please reach out to any one of us with additional questions uh, that really you know will will uh, help us. Um, um understand uh you know what your needs are and may, maybe guide you if you even before applying if you have any questions additional questions or any type of support you think you need please reach out even before submitting the application we can always get on a quick call or uh follow up in an email with the uh with the answer and hopefully we will be able to help you I went ahead and put up the um, the slide with our contact info. Please feel free to reach out, like Mihai said. Um, if, do y'all have any other questions? Thank you, Bradley, for linking in. Um, please follow, um, subscribe to our newsletter. As well, that's where you'll receive the most um, upcoming information, especially on those um, incoming seed investment opportunities. As well as follow us on social media. Um, that's where we can support you as well. Go ahead, Mihai. I, I just shared in the chat, the presentation, the slides, everything is linked there with the emails and the web pages, but we will share with you once we are able to, to upload the video, this recording, uh, everyone who signed up for the webinar will receive an automatic email in case you, um, you need to revisit some of the things that were said. But just again, feel free to reach out to us, email or uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, anything that is, um, uh, that is easier for you. Perfect. One last call for questions and then we can give you back 20 minutes left of your day. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Carla, Monica, and Vince, for reaching out to us and starting this partnership. And I'm sure it's uh, it will lead to more uh, uh, interesting uh, projects. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, have a nice day, and looking forward to to hearing from you. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you for the hard work. Thank you. Bye. One more question, please. Oh, please. one more question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, just so I'm clear, for the nonprofit portion of this, do you have to be um, in the Riverside area? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Riverside County. <clears throat> yeah, but don't forget, we can connect you to other counties. So reach out to us. We want. We still want to help you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think there are 1100 caps right <laughs> uh, so uh what are better resources than carla Vince, and monica to get more information about uh, other uh, other caps Th thank you everyone and uh, have a good day